welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast, where it's all about fixing your marriage without your husband's conscious effort so that you feel desired, taken care of, and special, even if your relationship feels completely hopeless. I'm Laura Doyle, and today I'm talking about what to do when the intimacy skills don't work for you. My guest Marla's home was full of fights that turned violent and their children were suffering. Her husband avoided her and then he said he wanted to separate and live alone abroad. Marla made a decision to do a few things differently in her marriage and today she says her marriage is very respectful and her husband is no longer planning to leave. He cleans the kitchen every day before she comes home and hangs out in the living room to talk to her. She's going to tell us what she did so you can do it too. The worst relationship advice of the week award goes to the answer to the question, my husband won't spend time with me. What should I do? This advice is actually what you should do if you want him to go far, far away and possibly leave tire marks in the driveway, then you'd want to follow this advice. All that's coming up. But first, I'm going to talk about what to do if the intimacy skills don't work for you. As an Empowered Wife podcast listener, you may have found yourself feeling hopeful that you could make your marriage last and thrive, like you're hearing about every single week from the wives who share their stories. Maybe you got inspired to read or listen to the audio book, The Empowered Wife, or, or you know, to read the paperback version of it, uh, where the six intimacy skills are laid out step by step. And maybe you started experimenting with them at home, which is logical, right? But maybe it just didn't go over that well. Maybe your husband didn't even respond to you when you apologized, or, or maybe he told you to stop with the gratitude because he doesn't need that. Or maybe you're working hard to practice the intimacy skills and he still won't even talk to you or he's announced that he's moving out or that he wants a divorce. It's so demoralizing and it just seems so unfair. You might conclude that your situation is different or that it's too far gone and the intimacy skills just won't work for you. And because you've heard so many success stories from wives on this podcast, you might feel like the only woman who this isn't working for, which is awful. It's scary. And it's painful to feel all alone and hopeless like that. It's especially tragic because you're not all alone. You're in very good company. It's not uncommon for students and even our coaches to feel like the six intimacy skills just aren't working for them. No kidding. But that doesn't mean that your situation is hopeless. Here's what it actually means. Number one, you need the support of a community. As a listener of this podcast, you are part of a worldwide community of over 25,000 listeners. We have something in common, all of us, because we all think that having a strong marriage is important because it is. And we all think it's worthwhile to spend time and energy getting inspired to do the things that make marriages last and thrive. But unless you're a guest on the podcast, this conversation is a little one-sided for you, right? You're listening to me and to the guests, but you also need to be heard and seen and understood and supported in making your marriage playful and passionate in my experience. Now, at least I needed that. And I see that our students blossom when they get that too. That was the key for me because before I had a community, the six intimacy skills weren't working for me because I couldn't do them. It wasn't that the intimacy skills were so hard. They were just new. And I kept reverting to my old way before I even knew what had happened. And then I got a community of women that I talked to and I listened to. I supported them and they supported me. And that's when the magic happened. And that's when my marriage changed. And to this day, when I'm not closely connected to the students and the other coaches in this community, my marriage isn't as shiny because I don't do as well without the inspiration and motivation and the encouragement of a safe like-minded community. It's kind of like when I don't exercise for a while and I get winded just going up the stairs. That's just not how I want to feel. So part of my own self-care and, and the care and feeding of Laura is to share with and listen to the women on our campus. 
the coaches in our regular meetings and the guests on this podcast. Just like I need sleep and food and volleyball and watermelon to be happy, I also need to commune with my people. Otherwise, the intimacy skills just don't seem to work. Number two, you need a coach. But what if it's not that you don't remember to use the intimacy skills all the time? What if it's that you try the phrases and the actions that are recommended in the book and he just doesn't respond the right way? That's frustrating and it's discouraging. But what I've noticed is that we all have our blind spots. And just like fish are swimming around in the ocean and they never even notice that they were all wet, we don't even realize we're bringing a criticism or a complaint or control to a conversation and that it's coming through loud and clear to the other person. And this is where a coach who's been where you are can now reflect back to you that as frustrating and hurtful as your situation is, there is something you can tweak. There's an experiment that you can try uh, or a new pair of perspectives that you can put on that will change everything in your marriage. I mean, to this day, I still love to get coached to see what my blind spots are and to see what beliefs I have that are holding me back. I get excited about that process because it means I'm about to go to the next exciting level of this video game where I'm more empowered and even more ridiculously happy, but I can't do it alone. I need to hear myself talk and have someone give me empathy and reflect back to me what it is I'm focusing on. And having a coach do that, it's kind of like having a fairy godmother. She helps you learn how to wave your magic wand and have the intimacy skills work for you. If you'd like to be my guest on the Empowered Wife podcast and share about how you fixed a struggling relationship using the six intimacy skills, I would love to interview you. Just go to lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest to let me know that you are willing to make a big contribution to ending world divorce by telling your relationship story. I look forward to meeting you. That's lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest. My guest Marla's home was full of fights that turned violent and their children were suffering. Her husband avoided her. And then he said he wanted to separate and live alone abroad. Marla made a decision to do a few things differently in her marriage. And today she says her marriage is very respectful and her husband is no longer planning to leave. He cleans the kitchen every day before she comes home and hangs out in the living room to talk to her. She's going to tell us what she did so you can do it too. Marla, welcome to the Empowered Wife podcast. I'm so excited to hear your whole story. Thanks for coming on. You're welcome. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> so tell us about the bad old days. What was happening in your marriage? Well, the, the bad old days started when we were dating because um, I was always going to therapy uh, before I even met my husband. And then when I was in therapy... I met this guy that I was totally not interested in. And my therapist said, just date him so he can practice being in a relationship. So my practice relationship then turned out to become my husband. But uh, the first date I said to him, if you want to go out with me, you have to go to therapy with me. And so we, uh, he goes, oh, okay. And so he, he already wanted to please me then, but I didn't see it that way. And then um, at the therapy office, he opened the gate to the therapy office. And I'm like, you don't need to do that for me. I can open the gate myself. So we started off from day one on the wrong foot. And I had no clue what I was doing wrong. And then it just progressed from there because I don't know why, but he still was interested in me after all of that. <laughs> And then uh, we, it progressed and, and I practiced because my therapist told me to practice. And I really, really am so mad about this, but uh, we practiced. And then um, he was very respectful in many ways. I was very uh, not interested in physical relationship at the beginning. And he was very respectful. And, 
and then eventually it still kept on going and then we started an actual relationship and we continued to go to therapy and every time we were in therapy we would have this smashing fight after or before and it was always always um some form of some form of finding fault in the other i would make lists of making making sure that i didn't forget that what he did this week and make sure that he did this wrong make sure i tell the therapist about this one and we did this for 12 years because yeah he was multiple times divorced and i came from divorce so i thought we better hang on to the therapy because otherwise we would be totally split up but 12 years into it we had two children and it was still a battle for 12 years for more than 12 years this big fat battle and we had even police officers involved when we would go on the trip like state troopers came and 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 and, and interfered and all kinds of scary things because we would have these big fights in public and it was horrible and the kids were part of it it was super horrible yeah it sounds uh like a kind of a miserable 12 years of telling on each other having the therapist be the referee yes of the relationship and um and having those painful fights and then even having to get the authorities involved even well they didn't even they just kind of showed up because they, maybe somebody else called on us but we were standing at the side of the highway oh. this happened i think twice and i guess drivers by because then the state trooper would stop and we're like you know i was almost strangling my husband he wasn't that violent he would eventually snap but i'm like losing it on him in the middle of the highway on the side and so somebody picked up on it, I guess. And then the state trooper came. We're like, are you guys okay? I'm like, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's why sounds... it always happened. Yeah. So it was almost like it happened and I, I couldn't control it. I had no idea how that all the time kept happening. Mm-hmm. And you and you felt like the therapy was the only thing keeping you guys together. Yeah. And now in retrospect, I wonder how you view that. Well, so we would have therapy weekends and every, and then it started to occur to me every time when we drive back from the therapy weekend, we're either in a cold war or a, an a outright war. There's something wrong with this picture, but I still had to repeat it about five years after I started to question it until I'm like, there's a real correlation here. But we also fought like, so on Friday evening, um, he would have a long work week and I was usually home with the kids. He would come home exhausted and I was already bracing myself because Friday or Saturday another one would break out it's like he would be home so something would be wrong because he would do something wrong for sure I was ready for it and some fight would start Mm. and usually by the end of the weekend we would reconcile somehow wow yeah and so and then he was also avoiding you it sounds like too yeah, so the last recent years, um, this uh, the the violent fights were more a little bit longer ago, and then I think eventually he just uh, sort of gave up or shut down, and he would just I, I would call it disappear, and the therapists would say to him that he was disappearing, and they would sort of hammer on him and be on his case about it, so that kind of made me feel justified, and like somebody kind of sort of in a weird kind of way understood me but they really didn't understand me and they really were making it worse by being on his case. Mm -hmm. And he would just retreat to his, to the basement and be on his phone with headphones or on his computer with headphones on. And I couldn't call him for dinner even. And it just made me feel so lonely. And it was when my kids became kind of teenagers, I was just by myself all the time because he was not even, I can't even call him. His cell phone, even if I texted him, his ringer was off. He was just unreachable. He just put this big wall around him. Wow. It sounds very lonely. Mm -hmm. And uh, he uh, also was making plans to leave, it sounds like. Yeah, so then this uh, this actually happened after... This was actually after I already read the book. So that's kind of an important detail. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me ask this too. I wanted to ask, 
did when you quit going to therapy, did anything improve in your marriage? Well, the moment that happened for us where things had to change was that moment. So we we didn't continue to go to that therapist, but um, my husband found a male therapist that he thought was more reliable. And I knew this male therapist as well. So I felt fine with that. So we ended up for the last uh, for, for, for the last years before we stopped going individually uh, as a couple and individually to this man. And he's a super good man. And I really like him. Um, but one day in, I think, 2000 and I forget when, 17 maybe or 16, he, um, he, oh, shoot, I forget the details, but my husband went by himself a few times. And, and then he came home one day after therapy and he said, I want to separate. I don't trust you. I'm like, he's not under the right influence. If he comes home after therapy and says that, there's something wrong. But I had just read the book already. So I didn't overreact to it in that moment yet. I mean, I was panicking on the inside. I was falling apart. But I, I didn't handle it like I might have in the past, throwing an object or threatening whatever or something. I didn't do it that way. So I was already sl- starting to be saved by the skills. Mm. so good yeah that's that's pretty impressive that you Mm. just kind of heard that news and just took it in and didn't didn't react in the old kind of a rageful way it sounds like you were like Mm. me you were a rageaholic there yeah yeah wow so um okay so so what happened like yeah so um let me go back to 2016 when or no When he said, I'm not going to therapy with you anymore. Mm. But then after that was the one, a few times that he still went alone. He said, I'm done. I'm done. Well, actually what happened, that was a really bad day in my life. We came home from the therapy and it was an hour drive because it was a special location. And on the way there, he kicked me out of the car. We drove home together and there's no public transportation in that area. He kicked me out of the car. I don't, I don't think he shoved me out, but he meant it. So I kind of like rolled out of the car feeling completely lost, like a little child who was just being punished by her parent because clearly I had said something that upset him so much that he would do that. And normally he would never do something like that. And I was completely unsure what happened. And I had to hitchhike home. Wow. Because there's absolutely no transportation. I actually went with a trucker. I kind of, I, I kind of, I kind of um, knew that my intuition would be okay. That if I could feel if it was a safe person or not, and and it was a good man. He he just dropped me up at the nearest bus stop. Wow. Yeah, and that was a re- that was the lowest moment in my life. And I yeah. like the next week, and my husband said, "I'm not going to therapy anymore with you." And then he ended up going a couple of more times, and then. And then he had the news that he wanted to separate from me, but now, in, yeah. Had you thought about ending your marriage also? Well, I had pretty much thought of ending. See, my husband didn't really think of ending the marriage because he'd done that twice before and he didn't want to go through that horrible thing. So he called it separate just so that he would be left alone by me. And he, yeah. Yeah. And after this is all a process, so I don't remember the details exactly, but he did say things like, um, I wouldn't let you leave you stranded financially and stuff like that. And, um, and I said to him, I would not cut you off from your children because that had happened to him before. So we were being generous towards each other, but we were, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. But in the meantime, I had also read the book and I forget the exact timeline, but um, so I, uh, when he said I wanted to separate, I pretty much said to him, I hear you. Wow. I'm yeah. But it was, took me a lot Carla. of energy. Now, uh, one other point I wanted to hear a little bit about, cause you mentioned that your children were suffering, uh, from the fighting. So, so what was, much, what was happening there? How are they suffering? Um, that topic can easily make me cry because I, I was, I was 
such a horrible, horrible example for them and such a, I literally put them in the middle. Of course, I lived through that as a child myself. So yeah. I came by it honestly. Yeah. I mean, I knew exactly how to do that because it was done to me. That's why it was role modeled for you. Yes. That was your training. Yeah. But, but this, I wasn't divorced, but I was doing the same tricks, the t- same wild tricks, really. And in the moments that I would use my kids as weapons almost, I would, um, I would completely forget that I love them. I would just, I would just say the most horrible things, like, like literally the most horrible. I'm not even going to repeat it. Yeah. yeah. And it gave you a, a, an emotional hangover afterwards. It sounds an like. emotional hangover. And because, because it wasn't really my truth, no. it was my way of somehow screaming that I wanted something different. But you didn't, you didn't know how to get it. You it didn't know how to get it. And I also didn't know how to be heard because everything that came out of my mouth in those rages, or not just rages, also just little uh, like lectures and, uh, you know, all these types of things, lessons that I wanted to teach my husband or hurting my children so that my husband would maybe understand it or things like that. None of that, I think, it fell completely on deaf ears. I don't think he even remembers what I said in those moments. Yeah. And you're, you're saying deaf ears because he, like he was tuned out. Your husband was, he was tuned, a, out. tuned out or B he was busy defending himself because I was attacking him. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Couldn't hear he couldn't you hear anything in yeah. those. No. Yeah. Wow. So, um, so it, it does sound rough. How, how did you find, uh, you found a book, you found one of the books. Yeah. So after he said, I, I am not going to therapy anymore. I'm like, yeah, me, me neither. And so that was easy. So, but uh, uh, it was, it was difficult because we had d- relied on it for more than a decade. We had literally relied on therapists for getting us to the next therapy appointment, really, but it wasn't that great in between either. And, um, and um, so I went to the library and I took a, a cardboard box and I loaded it up with the entire marriage section. So I came home. I um, usually don't uh, go in the car much, uh, but I had to take the car because I had such a big box of marriage books. And then I plopped it on the, on the floor and I went through all my mar- the marriage books and I sifted through one. And then, and then I looked in the box and I saw this bright turquoise cover and it says, first kill all the marriage counselors. And I opened it and I, never opened any other book after that (sighs) they all got returned and i devoured the book the title in that moment was the perfect thing for me after after all those years and 15 years of failed counseling yes yes so that book is now called the empowered wife which has been renamed but i'm so glad that it spoke to you at that time and and like I said, I, they were all good people and the therapist, but that book was just what I needed. And it was called the empowered wife. I don't know if I might have not found it. I don't know. Maybe not. Right. Who knows? Who knows? So, so, uh, what did you, what did you start to do differently than you'd been doing things? Well, of course it started with self-care and I was at a loss. I literally never wear makeup. I am totally a simple girl. And I went to the nail salon. I didn't know what self-care was. So I went to the nail salon and the woman goes, do you want shellac? And I have no idea what that meant. So I said, yeah. And then I find myself with nail polish that I can't take off. And I didn't even know what that meant. (laughs) Because I was trying to explore what is self-care. Yes. Yes. So you're having an adventure in a way, like learning yes. things, stretching, trying to trying to grow. Yeah. So that's so you took immediate action. It sounds like immediate. I mean, yeah. disappointment with this nail polish place, and that. And then I'm like, no, that's not self care for me. But then I knew that, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But you're trying to figure out what it was, and sometimes it's not to... a straight line, right? It doesn't exactly. always. So you were experimenting. And it yeah, and it changes, right? Yeah. Depends on your mood. So, what what other kinds of self care did you start doing? Um, back then, um, 
Well, um, a lot of my self-care, one that's always consistent is food. I always do self-care snacks and self-care smoothies and self-care tea and self-care. I'm actually a super healthy person, so I don't eat uh, like self-care French fries or something or self-care hot dogs. I, right. You know, I do self-care smoothies with different flavors. Or, yeah. Uh, so that type of thing. Yeah. Um, and I, for a little while, it was walks. I would go on walks every day. And then suddenly I had enough. <laughs> and so, and then sometimes, and also for a little while, I followed this yoga person online. And now I'm not, not no more yoga. No more yoga. No. Okay. Yeah. So you're really yeah. tuned into yourself, Marla. You know what is serving you and what feels good. And that's what you're, so I love it. So how did that impact your relationship? Well, what it did for me, and, and it still does today, Sometimes my self-care is just go to my room and close the door and then whatever, whatever, tidy my room or lie on the floor and do some stretches or listen to a podcast, whatever. I just be by myself. And the effect that and all my self-cares have on me is to remember myself. It's just Mm -hmm. like, uh, if I am not doing self-care, I forget myself. I get lost in the housework the children, the husband, what he's doing wrong, um, the weeds, the dust, whatever, my work. So in for me, almost all my self cares makes me remember me. Oh, on my bike. I go on my bike rides sometimes also for self care. Oh, then I and then I start to sing or I just or I have just random thoughts in my head. But it's me. I just remember me. Yeah. And so it's like just really tuning into yourself, being on your own paper. What, mm-hmm. How does that change the way you interact with your husband? A lot. So, <laughs> so sometimes I come home from work and he, um, he will want to talk to me and I'll just very nicely rather, for all those years in the past, all the uh, 15 years, we, he would come home and it would be an immediate fight. Now I know now it's me actually usually leaving and him not not leaving but now I know I would really like to be alone for a bit and then I want to talk Mm. oh so easy so easy okay just let me know when you're ready he'll say very eagerly to please oh he (laughs) wants to give you your solitude because he knows yeah he's going to have a happier wife if he does that so all right so then you have your solitude and you come out and then there's no fights or um, I mean, not no fights, but oh my goodness, S- significantly, there's some irritations, like, I guess, with anybody who lives in your house. Yes. Um, but yes. there's nothing, nothing like that. Maybe twice a year still, I have a little, you know, because I'm a very energetic, uh, passionate person. Sometimes I lose it or sometimes I forget. Sometimes I let myself run down or I forget to first take some self-care before I start diving into everything. Yeah. And then I have the the quick fix ready in the back of my head. And that, uh, in fact, uh, there was a bit of a stressful period last week because of organizing a trip and um, he was uh, preoccupied with it. And I find that really hard when he's preoccupied with something because I think it has something to do with me. Mm-hmm. and it and then I always say it's not to do with me but still I, I I lost it a little bit and then I actually apologized for being disrespectful and he said thank you for the first time I've used that skill he actually said thank you wow sometimes he goes oh that's whatever he'll say whatever or that's fine or whatever but it still helps me to say it but this time he actually said thank you <sighs> Oh, that was yeah. so good to have him receive it so well. Yes. So you've all that now that's a very humble thing to say, right? I'm, mm-hmm. I apologize for being disrespectful. It's not the easiest words to get out of your mouth sometimes. Especially because honestly, I think it was more than 50% him. Right. Stress for right? a strip, but I still said, I don't care. Even if it's 10%, I'll just do my part. I'll just clean up my side of the street. Mm-hmm. Oh, beautiful. I love that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so. And he was, so he said, thank you. And then there was, it was really much lighter after that. It was lighter. Wow. Very good. Mm -hmm. Okay. What else, what else have you done differently than you used to do? Everything. I, I am amazed for 15 years. I almost knew nothing about him because I was always talking 
and I was always telling him how things had to be. It's so embarrassing to admit, but I didn't know any better. So now, yeah, it's so embarrassing, but like, how did I not know this? But you told me, you told me it. So I'm like, thank you for this manual. <laughs> that is so easy to follow. It's not even complicated. I don't have to go back to my childhood. No. I don't have to, you know, I don't have to process. I don't have to f- ask him what he's feeling. I no. don't have to, I just have to know a little bit what I'm feeling. Even if it's not perfect, I can kind of try. And so now I... um I forget what your question was. <laughs> I do too, but I like what you're just saying. <laughs> like no one ever taught you before. No, I think it's such an important point because it is embarrassing. I was embarrassed to, to, to tell people the things that I did and said in my marriage, mm. but you, Oh, I know it. You were saying that he, uh, you didn't know much about him. I didn't know anything about him. I just, he was just a, a person with uh, really cute eyes um, <laughs> and, and, And yeah, and um, you know what, even this is really embarrassing, but I think it's very important to tell other mothers because I've seen other mothers do this. My, um, every time my, one of my children would say something to my husband, I would answer. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm exaggerating, not every time, but I would, I would make sure that the answer was was correct. Can you Mm -hmm. imagine what a stress balloon I was? Because having (laughs) to answer for me and for him, that's a lot of stress. Yeah. And can you imagine how, how little my husband was saying? Very little, because I was answering for him because I wanted to make sure the answer was right. That's oh right. Goodness. That is so embarrassing. I love hearing that, though, because you're right. I've heard other mothers do the same thing. And so it meant you were trying to be the mom and the dad. And, and the being, know-it-all. And yeah. the know-it-all. And the, yeah, the Wikipedia <laughs> of the family. Yes. And, um, and so... Uh, so now it sounds like you know more about this man. How did that happen? Yeah. So now <laughs> started with saying, I hear you. Uh, that I hear you is brilliant because he can so be so long winded. I didn't even know that about him because I was always talking. I didn't know that he could go on and on and on and on and on and on and on about everything. <laughs> and that he's so passionate about food and that he's so passionate about different drinks and cocktails, and he tells me everything about it. And um, to the very detail of what type of lime and what type and how to cut it and how it's the best, and mm, this is the best, and uh, and different different things. He he now talks the most. Wow. And every time I get bored with his calls, with his talks. I remind myself, I wanted this. I wanted this. I wanted this. This is humongous progress. This is the biggest gift I can give him. I can- is, so this was something you were arguing about in therapy that he didn't talk or he never or talks. What, what's going on with you? Why don't you ever say anything? Stuff like that. Okay. okay. He never says anything. He never contributes anything. You know, that was one of the criticisms. So you restored the emotional safety. A hundred percent. Yeah. So when he comes into the room and he starts to jab, 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 I'm like, yes, I did this. (laughs) I created the safety so he can just tell me whatever. And now you're like, and I don't care about that way that you cut the lime so much. No, not so much per se. (laughs) (laughs) But it's his voice and it's his thoughts and it's his ideas. His energy and and his enthusiasm and... And it's cute when he, when he's in that way, he's like cute. Yeah. And it's a connection. You're having intimacy. Yeah. Even if it's not st- it's the topic you care about so much, but it's what he cares about. And he's, exactly. You're there to bear witness to him. Exactly. Yeah. It's beautiful. Well, I love that. Well, um, what, what's, what is your marriage like now? Well, like I, um, re- like you said in the introduction, when I come home, he says, welcome home. You look great. I'll be here wherever he's going to be in the house, ready to listen to you when you're ready. Because oh, he knows you like a little solitude when you get home. Yeah. If, if you want to talk right now or um, oh. shall we wait a little bit? I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> the, kitchen, the kitchen is spick and span. This is the same guy that used to have the headphones in the basement and his phone was silenced. Uh-huh. Same guy. 
Yeah, the hundred percent the same one, <laughs> just just the better version of him. So did it? Did your husband change? Um, I don't know because I never knew him before. <laughs> Me berating him for every little thing. Um, so I, I, he must have been like this before he met me. But I do know that uh, he had an ex who did the same uh, abuse to him as I did at the beginning. So I think for this, this free, fun, loving, cute, sharing, open hearted person had been buried for a while, I think, that, yeah. he, that he now is yeah. and generous and, and uh, yeah. And loyal. Right. He's loyal. He always was. I was never worried about that. Even when he said I'm separating, I knew it wasn't because of another person. Yeah. Well, and he, and he didn't, he didn't, he didn't end up separate. Did you end up separating? I should ask actually. (laughs) Did I? (laughs) So I had been practicing the skills for about a year and a half when he said that separation thing. And I said, I hear you. And, um, No, the separation thing wasn't a year and a half. No, what happened was I had been diving deeper into the skills and joined um, one of the programs you had and um, the face would have, which come with, came with a Facebook group. And, and in one of the Facebook posts, somebody said to somebody else, it may have been you, but I forget that um, if your husband says, I want to separate, you don't have to believe them or something like that something similar. So this had been after we had been living as separated people in the same house, because he had declared he wants to separate. So kind of, I kind of obliged, but I focused a lot on self care. And um, it wasn't easy because I wasn't perfect in that in that year, because I was also resentful. But I, I went a lot, I did a lot of things on my own. And I went to a lot of meetings and events and to try to make it through. And then uh, about a year into living completely like roommates, I, I saw that post. And I read, uh, you don't have to believe your husband when he says that. Okay. So then he was abroad. And a day or a couple of days after I read that post, I decided I'm telling him I'm not separating. Maybe you said it, but why should I listen to you? Wow. So, but he was abroad. So he, he called me or I called him. I forget. He called me for my signature for an apartment in a different country. He wanted my signature to sign off on this bachelor apartment. So he could go through with the plan that he had announced a year ago. And that was the moment I decided, no, I'm not going along with this separation. So on the phone, he goes, if you don't mind, I'm going to fax these papers. I've purchased this apartment that I had been dreaming of. And I said, "Uh oh, and I just decided we shouldn't separate. I said to him and he said, oh, okay." And to me, that was a sign that was a This was actually like, it seemed like with his tone of voice, hmm, this is, it's not the, it's, it's, it's not over. There's hope. hope. You got hope. Because he didn't say, yeah, but I just bought the apartment and, you know, I I know this is my plan. He said, oh, okay. (laughs) So then when he came home with the new purchased apartment, I consciously focused on self-care and not panic about this apartment because I thought there can be all kinds of scenarios. You can still have an apartment. That doesn't mean we have to separate. And that's literally where we're at. This is a few couple of years ago, two, three, three years ago. And in the course, during the course of the last three years, it's, it's changed from my apartment to when you come and visit and, uh, Oh, um, from it's gone from it's it really is very tiny it's a very tiny apartment it's really only for one person to you can fit in too there's room we just have to make sure there's a, a second there's like a space i can figure it out uh, without oh, me asking he's just started to include me in the plans oh i love it i love it mm-hmm. speaking of hope right that must have mm-hmm. been exciting to hear him making plans so does he live in the apartment abroad well, that's the other thing that happened. He started to say, even if I don't ever live there, we can just rent it out. So he even 
you know, he, it, it's the story completely changed. Wow. And it changed hmm. because you changed your, your side of it, your intention. A hundred percent. Before you just went along, he said, we're going to separate. And you said, okay. And then you were like, oh, no, no. Uh, my, my intention is to keep my marriage. Yes. And that, and he, and now he's going along with that. Yes. <laughs> so, making plans to have but, him in this little tiny apartment. Exactly. Yeah. But going along is even too weak of a word. He's actively involving me. He's wow. actively making, for example, we're, we're doing a trip separately, but we meet somewhere together and he's actively, he, he took it upon himself to book a hotel for me it's for the time that I'm still by myself. And then we meet and then he's actively including me now. That's mm -hmm. a huge difference. He's taking care of you. He wants to make you happy. Yeah, for, for sure. Wow. Okay. Now what about your children? How is this impacting your children? So one of my children is already um, flown, has flown the nest. And um, this is actually um, a re weird thing because I uh, visited him and he actually said to me, you really damaged me. He said to me as a mother. And I said, thank you for, but this is also where the skills were super helpful for me because I said, I hear you. And I, I totally support you. And, and he says, I need therapy. And I'm like, yes, yes, do it. If you, if you need it, do it. I leave it up to you. I trust you. So uh, in the past, I might have freaked out over that or took, taken it on. or mm. uh, And also, I've let him know when you come home, things have changed in our house. You, it's not as bad as it used to be. You, you are... It's much safer. We fight way less. Come and experience it. I've invited him. And the other one is still at home. And he is like um, a, he had a super, 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 he was like a totally different, difficult preteen, slamming doors, crying, uh, being rude, uh, and uh, all kinds of pain was coming out from him and he is so chill now a hundred percent partly partly a hundred percent partly because of the skills he sees the peace between his parents and he doesn't have to be stressed out anymore wow i see you see a direct correlation with his yeah behavior. yeah and it's this just is unfortunate he's so old now but uh, i wish it had happened earlier but it's still so obvious he's a He's a, uh, he's a, uh, an older teenager. So it's, but it's never too late because he's like 180 degrees turned around. Well, that must feel really good as a mom. You must feel amazing to so, see that transformation in your so happy for him. Yeah. And this is a very, um, this is such a tender moment you describe with your older son too, where he says, mom, you damaged me. And it sounds like you were able to hear him, yeah. not defend yourself, not uh, argue with him or tell him he's wrong. Exactly. Uh, but just to be present, just to bear witness and still, uh, still love your son. It sounds like. Exactly. So this sounds like a transformation. Just uh, you, you, you have mentioned that you said things, horrible things to your children so and this would have, might have been one of those times, right? When your son was saying, Hey, mom, you damaged me. Mm -hmm. That could be a time that could make a person defensive, right? You might have. Yeah, heard. exactly. How do, you, how do you think you would have responded pre skills to that kind of a message? Oh, that's really hard to say. I can't imagine that those days anymore. It's become part of me. It's become part of me. Um, I am very emotional. So I think before and this time too, I got tears in my eyes. Um, but maybe this time I allow the tears more. I don't fight them as much. Yeah. And so you were vulnerable mm -hmm. while you were saying this. Mm -hmm. And then I'm imagining there was a connection to your son in that moment. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think yeah. he was, I think he took a double take. We were in the car. He looked to me to see why I wasn't reacting. Wow. Yeah. And wow. also because he probably felt my emotionalness. This must feel like a big accomplishment. Yeah, but that, but for with him, it still has is mixed with regret that I didn't get it sooner. 
Of course. Yeah. I remember feeling regret that I didn't know about the skills sooner Mm -hmm. also. Um, And then also like you just feeling so much gratitude that I have them now. Yeah. Um, Because it's good to have them now. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And it's so simple. (laughs) Yeah, it is. Anybody can do it. Yeah. It's just that it, it takes a person who is convinced that it's worth saving your family. I've, I've passed your book on, I've actually ordered it on behalf of people and sent it to them because they needed it, but not everybody is there because you have to really be clear in yourself that you want to save your family. It's worth the family. And the payoff is, huge yeah. I mean my divorced sibling comes and visits and she's jealous wow yeah wow oh my gosh amazing so you get to be that light in the world for what's possible mm-hmm. that there's there could be a happy marriage a happy family with your yeah with both of your sons really yeah even though there's some regrets I, mm-hmm. I think that's uh, you're a mere mortal woman Yes, that's going to happen, right? Yes. But I don't. What I don't hear is the resentment. There used to be a lot of resentment. How is where'd that go? The resentment towards my husband. Yeah, you said earlier that you had so much resentment. I said that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I definitely have um, different perspectives on almost every day, and um, I, I see little irritations and then I put my I take those perspectives off and I put the other ones on consciously I have to make the switch in my head and either I I go upstairs and think of three three to ten gratitudes sometimes not not ten but up to ten sure or sometimes I just say thank you for having the counter cleaned up before I came home. I just find a little snippet of something and it just shifts everything. Wow. So you can do uh, like, you drop and do three sometimes or drop and do 10 gratitude yeah. and yeah. the resentment leaves. Yeah. Yeah. Or it, it just diminishes or, um, and also self-care. Yeah. Um, now I actually am at the point after practicing for four, four, four to five years, I'm actually at the point when I'm so irritated that my, my brain immediately goes self-care. Wow. In, in all those years prior, the 15 plus years prior, irritation, take it out on him. I didn't know any better. No, you didn't no. have any alternatives. Yes. No. So it's such a relief to now know that it's a sign to take care of Marla. Yes, exactly. Uh, you don't have so and uh I remember one of my students saying, Yeah, Godzilla doesn't get strong anymore now. Like the the rage side doesn't get strong. So I'm able to choose if I'm how I'm gonna show exactly. up. Exactly. Yeah. So what is your tip for someone who is maybe where you were, where she's strangling her husband on the side of the road, or she's um or he's buying an apartment over overseas to be separate from her or wearing the headset and she, you know, can't even reach him and she's full of resentment. Mm-hmm. Uh, but she wants what you have now where he is making plans and including you. And there's it's such a respectful marriage yes. and he he's just ready to talk to you when you come home yes. or, or he's ready to wait for you to be, have some solitude uh whichever yes. what, if she wants what you have now uh and their and their son is your son is doing better what should she do how should she start well i think that step number one is and i learned this for years in therapy it's all about you and it, the slogan, it's all about you, made no sense to me until I read your book. It is all about me. It's all about me. So start by taking care of yourself in the best way possible, because that way you start to find out what your feelings are. You start to find out what your desires are. You start to feel where your peace, where your center of peace is in your heart or in your activity or whatever you do it starts with you and so this program for me is 
much more than a relationship program. It's a self-help guide, no matter what happens to my relationship, because it was pretty much an, a lost case, my relationship. It was pretty much, he was gone. He was gone for months and months and months and months and months on end already when we were so-called separated and leading up to that. But even then, I'm like, it can only make me a better person. So I have nothing to lose. So start by taking care of yourself. You must be so proud of how you've transformed. Yeah, I'm totally proud. Right? What a yeah. great accomplishment. Like, woo! Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, I really have to start giving out awards. Here's my coffee mug yeah, yeah. <laughs> as your wife award. But uh, congratulations, because it is incredible what you, how you are so different and so. Uh, so much gentler and kinder and more tender and soft mm -hmm. now. So that is beautiful. Um, what would you say to yourself if you could go back and tell yourself what you know now? Good for you for valuing marriage so much, because that is really, um, even though I was a, a, a horrible nightmare of a wife, I still had my my values straight in my head. I'm not giving up on this marriage until I find the answer. And then you gave me the answer. Wow. Well, that's, I love how you were, you, sometimes people will go back to themselves and say, oh, just hang on or it'll get better. Or they give themselves a hug. But I really love that you found an acknowledgement for yourself, which is so positive, right? You see um, the beauty and the hope that was there even I when mean, it was I, so dark I could have been divorced seven years ago and then only find your book you know years after when it was too late but I, I didn't I, I just hung on till I found just it on, just by yeah. thread and that was yeah. enough it was enough to mm -hmm. have a miracle happen mm -hmm. yeah. yeah well congratulations this is super inspiring to hear and I'm so happy you shared it all with us today I'm Thank sure you. a lot of listeners are inspired too I hope so. Thank you. It's, uh, it's the best thing ever in my entire life. If you're wondering how to get started with fixing your relationship and making it shiny again, then you need a roadmap. Get six simple steps to follow that will set your relationship up for success. Discover three common mistakes that wives make trying to fix their relationship that just make things worse. When you download my free Adored Wife Roadmap, you can do that at getcherished.com. Go to getcherished.com now to get your roadmap in minutes. Relationship advice. Oh, uh, the worst relationship advice. Uh, yeah, it's the worst relationship advice. Oh, uh, the worst relationship advice. Oh, uh, the me. And now it's time for the worst relationship advice of the week award. And the advice that has me having a meltdown this week was sent to me by a student who has previously contributed to this segment of the podcast because she is just that good at spotting dreadful relationship advice and sending it to me. She writes, hello again, Laura. I've got another one here and I cringed when I read it. I knew you'd love this one for your collection. And she's right that this fits right into my vast and ever-growing collection of underachieving dubious relationship advice. So I love this. And I want to give you a shout out for sending me this tripe. I get so excited when I have something to put in the shredder and use for confetti at a parade. Thanks for the love. This article is called, my husband won't spend time with me. What should I do? And a self-described world-renowned therapist answers the question and OMG, the answer is breathtakingly bad. It says, quote, when approaching your husband about this, don't criticize or apportion blame as this can put the other person on the defensive and lead to an argument. So far, so good. And then it says, instead, find time to sit down at the weekend and tell him exactly how you feel. 
why you think it's important that you spend more quality time together and suggest ways that you might do this. Be prepared to hear his side of the story too. And what I love is that the student who sent this in wrote, it sounds nice and even like it's what a wife should do. But I know if I told my husband how, what, where, when, and why he should be spending time with me, I would get nothing but a cold shoulder. She continues, I feel bad for the woman who has written in. This will only make it worse. And the following information she gives is even more horrible. Thanks for all you do, Laura. You've helped me change my marriage completely around. I'll have my story on your podcast sometime. And of course, this student is right that explaining to my husband why he should spend more time with me and how he should do it, it never got me what I really wanted, which was for him to be excited to see me and drawn to me naturally without me having to say a word. And I feel that from him now all the time. I never feel inclined to have to tell him that he should spend more time with me because he spends plenty of time with me. But taking this oft repeated but ineffective approach never, ever got me there. Quite the opposite. This approach of finding time to lecture him about spending more time with me only led to him disappearing faster than Usain Bolt running 100 meters, the fastest man in the world never to have him seek me out or sit super close to me on the couch or grab me for a kiss because he was passing me in the hallway like he does now. And for that reason, the advice to sit down at the weekend and tell him exactly how you feel, why you think it's important that you should spend quality time together and suggest ways that you might do this is the very, very worst relationship advice I have heard all week. Listen and subscribe to the Empowered Wife podcast. Next week, I'll share how to tell someone they hurt you. In the meantime, I hope you're having lots of fun. Today's fun fact is that I have two challenges, not enough closet space and also nothing to wear. <laughs>